Hi everybody, Justin here from chemistrynotes.com and today's video is the second video on section 6 or chapter 6 if you will. So this is uh, S6E2 and today's video is going to talk about uh, the internal energy of a system and its relationship between heat Q and work W. So we're going to talk about work and positive work and negative work and expansion and compression, the point of view of the system and the surroundings and stuff like that. So let's get right to it. So page one, the internal energy of a system. A system is like a chemical reaction, okay? So the internal energy of a system is equal to the sum of the kinetic and potential energies of all the particles in the system. And again, a system is like the chemical reaction. It's the reactants in the products. And we'll define system and surroundings in just a second. So the internal energy of a system is the sum of the kinetic and potential energies of all the particles in the system. Now this internal energy, E, can be changed by a flow of work, W, heat, Q, or both. In other words, Delta E, or the change in that energy, is equal to Q plus W. Energy is equal to heat plus W. So let's examine the specifics of Q and W, shall we? Q being heat, W being work. Specifically, the signs, the signs plus or minus. So the signs plus or minus of heat and work are identified from the point of view of the system. And remember, the system is the chemical reaction. So heat and work and the plus or minus signs that go with it are always examined from the point of view of the system. So we're going to have four points here, A, B, C, and D. A, if the reaction is endothermic, heat flows into the system and thus heat or Q is positive from the perspective of the system. So heat is greater than zero. B, if the reaction is exothermic this time, heat flows out of the system. So the reaction or the system is losing heat and therefore heat or Q is going to have a negative sign on it. Think of the positive and negative as directions. All right, so A and B were in terms of heat. Now let's take a look at C and D. If the reaction, in other words, if the system, if the reaction does work on the surroundings, and this is something that would happen with uh, expansion, right? If the reaction or the system does work on the surroundings, energy flows out of the system. So work or W is going to have a negative sign in front of its value. W is less than zero. The work is negative. Not like a negative work, but the direction is away from or out of the system. And then D is the opposite. If the surroundings do work, W, on the system, energy flows into the system, right? So if the surroundings are doing work on the system, for example, like compression, and we'll get into expansion and compression in, in a bit, then work is positive, all right? So let's do an example to kind of explain these things. Calculate the change in energy, delta E, for a system undergoing an endothermic process. So we have a system or a reaction undergoing an endothermic process in which 15.6 kilojoules of heat flows and where 1400 joules of work is done on the system. All right, well, first of all, I see we have a kilojoules and a joules. We'll have to take care of that. But delta E is equal to Q plus W. So delta E is equal to 15.6 kilojoules, all right, 
So this is an endothermic process. Heat is going into the system, so it's plus 15.6 kilojoules. And it says 1,400 joules of work is done on the system, so that's another plus 1,400. We uh, convert our 1,400 joules into 1.400 kilojoules, and we get delta E equals 17.0 kilojoules, positive. That means the reaction is gaining 17.0 kilojoules of energy. All right, so let's talk a little bit more about work and uh, terms like expansion and compression and what really is negative work and positive work. So let's put that down in our notes here. Top of the page, it says more on work. It says the work, in quotes, the work associated with chemical processes is usually done by gases, gases are much easier, to, it's much easier for a gas to expand and compress, right? Uh, liquids and solids are already very compressed. So the work associated with chemical processes is usually done by gases through expansion or work done to gases through compression. So let's examine two cases. We're gonna have a case one and a case two and then we can look at work and look at the sign positive or negative for work. So let's examine two cases in the following relationship between work, external pressure, and volume. Okay. So the external pressure for the most part is it's constant. We're basically going to be looking at the change in volume here. So the work equation becomes work equals minus the pressure times the change in volume where the change in volume is the final volume minus the initial volume. So the external pressure, like I just mentioned, is usually a constant in these types of problems. So W depends on delta V. The work depends on the change in volume, expansion or compression, right? Here's case one. We're gonna have two cases. Here's case one. If a gas expands, right, if a gas expands, the volume of the system increases. Look at my hands. If the gas expands, the volume of the system increases, so the change in volume, delta V, is positive. All right? Now, because pressure is positive, pressure P is always gonna be some positive value, whether it's 15 ATM or 1.06 ATM or 795 tors, it's always a positive pressure. So because pressure is always positive, then the work must be negative by way of that equation, right? Because you have work equals minus P change in volume. Now, this situation here, if a gas is expanding, then the work must be negative. This correlates well with C in that A, B, C, D list we just made because the reaction or the system is doing work on the surroundings, right? Via expansion. So to look at case one again, a gas is expanding. So the volume increases. Delta V is positive. Pressure P is positive. So the work is negative. Okay. Why is the work negative? Well, the system is doing work on the surroundings in order to expand the, vo the volume, okay? So energy is leaving the system, negative. Case two, if a gas gets compressed, so case one, we were doing expansion, here's case two. If a gas gets compressed, it looks like this. Look at my hands, smushed. If a gas gets compressed, the volume of the system decreases. Delta V is negative. If a gas gets compressed, the volume of the system decreases. So the change in volume, delta V, is negative. It's got a negative sign in front of it. Because pressure is always positive, then according to our expression, W equals minus P delta V, 
the work must be a positive. Must be a pod, must have a positive sign in front of it. All right. Why is this? Well, if I'm the system or the reaction and, I, and, and, and the gas is being compressed, that is work being done on the system by the surroundings. That correlates well with um, item line item D when we had the A, B, C, and D list. D from a few pages back in our notes. Okay, this correlates well with D from a few pages back because the surroundings are doing work on the system by compressing our reaction. Okay, so because the surroundings are doing work on the system in order to compress the volume. So work is going to be positive because work is done on the system. Okay, energy is flowing into the system or into the reaction. All right. Let's do an example. Examples always help us make more sense of some of the notes. So calculate the work associated with the expansion of a gas. So we have a gas expanding, all right? So our system is expanding. Calculate the work associated with the expansion of a gas from 46 liters to 64 liters at a constant external pressure of 15 ATM, all right? Pressure constant, 15 atmospheres, no surprises there. They like to keep the pressure constant. We, we like to look at the change in volume most often. So work is minus P delta V. We just plug numbers in. Work is minus 15 atmospheres times positive 18 liters because the gas expanded. So work is minus 270 liter atmospheres, all right? There is a way to convert liter atmospheres to joules. We'll see that in the next few pages. But for right now, they didn't ask us what the units were. So we'll just leave them in the units of liter atmospheres. Now, don't think of that negative sign as a negative number. Think of it as a direction. So we have a minus sign, okay? This is because work is, I'm sorry, the system is doing work on the surroundings in order to expand. So that's negative work since the gas expands. Compression would be work on the system that's positive work. All right, next example. Top of the page here on our notes. It says a balloon is being inflated by heating the air inside of it, All right? Just think of a hot air balloon being inflated, some sort of balloon just being inflated by heating the air inside of it. The volume of the balloon increases from 4.00 times 10 to the 6 liters big balloon, right, to 4.50 times 10 to the 6 liters. So the volume of the balloon is increasing. Delta V is going to be positive. By the addition of 1.3 times 10 to the 8th joules of energy as heat. Okay? Assuming that the balloon expands against a constant pressure, no surprise here with these problems, we like to have constant pressure, Assuming that the balloon expands against a constant pressure of one atmosphere, calculate delta E for the process. All right, note, this is for unit conversions here. It wants to let us know, by the way, one liter atmosphere is equal to 101.3 joules. So we'll use that when and if we need it. But we're asked to find delta E, right? And we know, right, in our toolkit that we have a, an, an equation for delta E, and that's equal to Q plus W. So if I can find Q and find W, put them together with the units matching, and I can find delta E. Well, Q is given right off the bat. The heat is 1.3 times 10 to the eighth joules, all right? So I just have to find work, W, and that's underneath the squiggly line here. Work is minus P delta V. Well, W equals minus my P, which I know I can plug in as 1.0. Delta V is VF, minus VI, it's just a change in volume. Okay, so what I have is work equals minus 1.0 ATM times quantity 4.50 times 10 to the six minus 4.00 times 10 to the six. I clean all this up, multiply through, I get a would be answer in this little dashed box, negative 5.0 times 10 to the fifth liter atmospheres, convert liter atmospheres into joules, my work is W equals minus 5.1 times 10 to the seventh joules. Now I have Q 
and I have W both in joules, I can put them into my delta E equals Q plus W equation. So it gets kind of tight over here, but you can see I'm actually adding these two terms up. So delta E equals 8.0 times 10 to the seventh joules. And that's a positive change in energy. Okay. All right. So we've talked about internal energy and its relationship to Q, heat, and work, W. So we've had two equations here. W equals minus P delta V. And then delta E equals Q plus W. We've talked about expansion and uh, positive work. We've talked about compression. We've talked about negative work. So compression, expansion, and its relationship between work and the signs of work. Well, how exactly can we measure heat, Q, experimentally? Well, that's the next video. The next video is an important one. It's on calorimetry. So hopefully you'll stick around for that video and I will see you then. Take care.